Welcome to another session in our Women Lead webinar series brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Michelle Burquist, your host today, as we are delighted to bring yet another informative webinar to our Association of Professional Women. Our webinars are designed for you, the professional leader in business, whether you are an aspiring female leader, or a woman who's leading people, or projects, or teams, or even a company or business. Our goal is to select topics and themes that support your goal to lead, achieve, and succeed more effectively in business. For today, our webinar is just shy of one hour, and at the half hour mark, we're gonna be answering any questions that you have and that you've submitted online during the presentation portion of our webinar. I am delighted to say that today, it's like the title of our webinar today is Energy at Work. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I definitely want more energy at work. I'm excited to introduce our thought leader today, and that is Valerie Delotti. She is the founder and capacity building consultant at the Talent Lab. And what you want to know about Valerie is she is not only the founder of the Talent Lab, which is a consulting and learning business. She is trilingual, holy cow, in English, French, and Arabic. And she is also, um, she is the, has accredited capacity as a, building, as a capacity building consultant with a background in international affairs and diplomacy resulting from her master's degree at the Lebanese American University. So welcome Valerie and say hello to all of our attendees. Can't wait to hear what you have to say. Hi everyone, uh, I'm very delighted that you're joining us today and I'm so excited to really introduce uh, this concept of energy at work. So um, I'm ready to, to start with this presentation and uh, I look forward also to your questions at the end of the session because um, for me what, one of the most important part of uh, webinars or of presentation is having your engagement and uh, let's, let's get started. So, uh, Michelle, I'm going to take control of um, the presentation. Mm -hmm. And, okay, so here we go. So, uh, what we're doing in this presentation or uh, through Energy at Work, we're trying to really explore what are the keys to success that have been introduced by a team management system. So, team management system uh, is a model that has been developed by uh, two Australian consultants, Dr. Charles Mike Garrison and Dr. Dick McCann. And what these two consultants have explored throughout uh, the past 20 years, through several interviews with international managers and with uh, several industries, is that the keys to success are uh, or rely, if you want, in two major components. So, as you see in the screen, we have what the team does, which is the tasks that the team and the types of work that the team is doing, plus how the team does it, which is the behavior. So how do people uh, interact and how do people deal with the tasks? So these two elements, we're going to explore them today in our presentation. So if we look at the slides, we have here an overview or a Sorry, a little, okay. Overview about the model of team management system. So how does this model work? If we look at the triangle, we have on the top of the triangle, the individual. So we really, we look at people's energies. So uh, what are people's uh, work preference? What strengths do they bring to the team? And how do they handle change in businesses and ambiguity? What we mean by ambiguity, so if they are faced in an unknown uh, work situation or an, in, um, an, an intriguing problem, how do these individuals cope with it? And if we look at the base, we have two elements. We have the job. So uh, we have to make sure that the individuals are clear about the tasks that they are doing. And we have to really understand what are the most critical functions at the job to make it successful. And when we look also here at the last question on the bottom, we see, do your energies match the job? So does the energy of the individual, which means the work preference or the strength of the individual match the type of work that this individual is supposed to do? And 
here facing the job, we look at the team. So every individual and every business is run by a group of people. So uh, what differences does this team uh, has? And these differences are actually, if we look at this circle, uh, are mainly the strengths that different people have and how these strengths can be linked together. If we look at the little circle here, so we look at effective linking. So how do different people think what the team is doing? Are there any critical gaps? So because with differences, uh, there are different perspectives, there are different opinions. So it's important when the a specific team is working to achieve a specific job or a specific project or a specific mission to really understand what are um, the similarities and the differences within this team or within this group of individuals and how they should focus their energies to really make uh, this job or the project successful. So what I'm going to start with this model, I'm going to start with what we call Okay, the types of work. So it's really important for us to understand the first model of the team management system, which is called the types of work model. So if we look here, we have the types of work wheel, which defines the nature of work in a team. So let's take a closer look at this wheel. This wheel has eight, if you want, uh, sections or eight uh, elements, which are called uh, the work functions. So this work functions are glued together, if you look in the middle, by a key function which is called linking. So what I'm gonna start by doing, I'm gonna go in this presentation in every work function to make sure that I can share with you uh, what these functions are and how they can really help you in your business so the eight types of work advising so when we looked at the pie before uh, there was the first type of work which is called advising and which means gathering and reporting information and we're gonna explore as we go what do we really mean by advising then we have innovating so creating and experimenting with ideas. So let's take the example for, uh, of a project. Uh, if you are, for example, to start a restaurant project, and we are to look at the first uh, work function, which is advising. So an example of gathering and reporting information, for example, would be to understand the uh, legalities related to the business, would be able to understand what type of um, information can really help in a building this restaurant business. Like we can look at uh, customer reports, customer expectations. So these are the type of information. It's an example, like there are, that it's not only these two, but I'm giving an example that we should consider. When we look at innovating and we focus, for example, on the project of opening a restaurant, innovating comes with creating and experimenting with ideas. So it's about really what makes uh, this project so unique. So it can be, for example, um, opening a restaurant with a special culinary fusion or um, in a specific uh, innovative location. So it's about really coming up with ideas to make the project unique. When we look at the third function, work function, which is promoting, it's about exploring and presenting opportunities. What we mean by exploring and presenting opportunities, it can be, for example, how to attract sponsors or investors to fund this project or to fund this idea. Then we have developing. Developing is assessing and testing the applicability of new approaches. So in this, for example, restaurant uh, example that we took, it can be, for example, having uh, food tasters, designing the menu, uh, designing the feel and the look of the restaurant. So this is what we mean by developing. Then we have organizing. Organizing is establishing and implementing ways of making things work. And here we look at setting up structures, policies, procedures, 
uh, processes, hiring and recruiting teams, producing is conclu concluding and delivering output. So it's the actual happening of the operation. So um, it's the actual service, for example, that happens in the restaurant, the live show. Inspecting, it's controlling and auditing the working of systems which taking this example of the restaurant project or the restaurant business, it's like having, for example, mystery clients who come and do um, quality inspections on the taste, for example, and the quality of uh, the food that is served. Maintaining, it's upholding and safeguarding standards and processes. So what we mean by standards and processes, uh, first we have, for example, to check uh, let's say in the example of the restaurant, uh, this restaurant project, um, I would say for the infrastructure. So let's look at the utilities, the materials. So make sure like there is continuous maintenance. And uh, not only we look at infrastructure, we look also at maintaining customer relationships. So creating business value is something that is very highlighted in the maintaining work function. So basically, here's a summary of the eight types of work that we saw in uh, the previous slide. So these types of work are, according to the team management systems model, essential for the success of businesses. Now, I've given here the example of a business project opening a new restaurant, but um, the deeper thought is to really adapt these eight types of work to your own business. So, or to your own work, or to your own uh, uh, role or job that uh, you do, or the way you contribute in, uh, in work. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start going in detail a little bit uh, through every work function. And what I would like to ask you is that in parallel, while I'm uh, exploring every function, try to think of how this function adapts or works in my business. And you can later ask me, for example, for some questions or uh, some guidance when we reach the Q&A session. So let's start now by going through advising. So advising work is concerned with giving and gathering information. It involves finding out what others are doing in your area of work and ensuring that you are following best practices. So, for example, we can look at the co uh, competitors. What, for example, uh, if we want to take the same example as in the restaurant business, what are competitors doing in this area? Or what's the recent trend, like research, focus on uh, what are the latest trends in the F&B industry? So here now we look, for example, information may need to be gathered from articles, reports, or books, or by meeting and talking with people. So here we see, for example, what are some ways that we can use to gather information. It means ensuring that you have all the information available for the team to make the best decisions and deliver the results. So advising based on the team management system model is the pillar or the foundation for um, work success. So it starts really with having the proper information uh, in order for us to build on it at work. Now I'm going to move to the second work function in details, which is innovating. So innovating is a key aspect of teamwork and involves challenging the way things are currently being done. So for example, let's say you are already doing your work. Uh, you go every day, you have your own routine. So when we look at innovating, it's really having this little moment, this little step back when we think, well, what can I do differently to improve? Or if I'm facing, for example, or I'm receiving every day specific complaints, or the complaints from customers are recurring, even though we are trying to find quick fix, what can we do or how can we really think differently to solve problems or to try to tackle problems from a different perspective. 
So innovating doesn't always have to be coming up with new ideas or new solutions. It uh, also has to do with trying to explore the current situation and find new ways of doing of uh, doing things. So if you are not up to date in your practices, your cost structure might be too high or you may no longer be delivering competitive service. So this is like a highlight on the importance of keeping up to trend and making sure that we adapt latest trends and technology to businesses, to our business or to our work. And here, like when we think of innovating, it's really it's true that there are new technologies and new trends, but what's the best way for us to make sure that it's adapting in our businesses? So we don't just like, for example, bring a new um, trend or a new technology and just quickly just implement it. What we have to do is think deeper on how this trend or this change can be integrated in our business. Innovating is essential for all teams. There are always better ways of doing things if you only take time to discover them. So as I mentioned earlier, having this step back moment, this reflective moment really helps us not only come up with new ways of thinking, but also help us find new solutions to potential problems that you're facing. The third work function is exploring or promoting. So when we talk about exploring or promoting, we focus on obtaining the resources, people, money, and equipment to carry out the work that uh, we want to do. Like what I mentioned previously in the example of the restaurant is trying to attract investors in order to be able to open and launch this new restaurant. So we have here to sell an idea. Or let's say you ha in your work you have to uh, present a new idea, you have to present uh, specific data, you want to convey a specific, a specific message. So when we look at exploring, we try to find the best way to promote and to get the buy-in, uh, whether from management, whether from uh, stakeholders, in order to um, achieve our desired outcome. So resources to implement new ideas will only be given if your team can persuade and influence people higher in the organization. So here um, I highlighted this paragraph because I'm taking the example that if you have a team and you're working within an organization, but if you are, if you are an entrepreneur uh, or um, if you're someone who already own a business, what can you do really to have um, other people invest in your business? What are the types of partnerships you can seek and you can explore to uplift the influence of your business? And here I focus on promoting to customers or clients, both inside or outside the organization, is also important if you are to continue, continually deliver what people want. So part of uh, promoting is also to look outwards. How satisfied are our customers? How do we really uh, convey information to our customers? So it focuses on engaging, whether already existing customers or new types of customers in our business. Now I move to the fourth element, which is developing. When we look at developing, so, we, we focus on practicality. So many ideas don't see the light of day because they are impractical. The developing activity ensures that our ideas are modeled and shaped to meet the needs of your customers and clients or users. For example, uh, here we come to testing. So when, for example, we have a specific recipe or we want to serve, like say, a new types of culinary fusion, and you, for example, write a new recipe or you try a new recipe, when it comes to developing, we really here see, well, I have to add a little more of salt. I have to, for example, uh, remove the tomato. So like, it really helps you make the idea more uh, practical or more suitable uh, for your type of work. Developing will ensure that what you are trying to do is possible. So here we look at feasibility. 
Uh, sometimes in projects we do uh, feasibility study, like we look at um, the ROI, return on investment. So we study the ROI of a specific idea, giving the resource constraint of your organization. So given the time, budget, and uh, resources that you have within you. Moving now to, to organizing. So when we look at organizing, we really look at getting into action and making things happen. So it involves organizing the team so that everyone knows what they have to do, how and when, like, like I mentioned earlier, it's setting up um, the policies, the processes, the structure, it's recruiting, uh, dividing the tasks, so making sure that the tasks are clear and divided across the people or across the team. There are no overlap in uh, the types of work, no duplicates, no recurrences. Having clear goals that, has to be, that have to be established and action taking to ensure that results are delivered on time and to budget. We move now to producing. Okay, so producing is action, is making it happen. Once plans are set up and everyone knows what has to be done, the team can concentrate on producing. This activity focuses on delivering the product or service on a regular basis to high standards of effectiveness and efficiency. So this is where we put what we call KPIs or key performance indicators. So whenever we want to conclude performance, uh, uh, performances and to do, to check like uh, really if the standards that I'm delivering are up to uh, my expectations or the expectations that were set when I firstly started with this idea of project or this idea of business or um, this uh, product or uh, service idea. So the, the producing function, we ensure that the team keeps on delivering the required outputs. So this is where we really measure and based on the criteria that we want to have the standards met. So it's the actual production of the business. When we look at inspecting, it's regular checks on work activities are essential to ensure that agreed standards are achieved. Quality audits of products or services will ensure that customers or clients will remain satisfied. Inspecting also covers the financial aspect of work in your team, as well as the security, safety, and legal aspects. For example, um, if I want to check the financial aspect of work, if we look backward at the function of exploring and promoting, getting the buy-in, for example, from investors, uh, receiving the budget. So when we do the inspecting, we look at how this budget has been um, allocated, how it has been used, for example, during, uh, during this project or in this, uh, in this specific activity. So it's about auditing uh, whether the finances, the type of, uh, work, how, they, how it's done, so it's reviewing. And we move to the function, last function, which is maintaining. In maintaining, so maintaining is an important activity that all teams need to focus on. Individually, we all do it in our day-to-day -day life, so it's with excellent teamwork that needs to be maintained. Uh, when I say here in the presentation, we all do it in our day-to-day -day life. So I would like to ask you, what do you maintain? Uh, you maintain your houses, you maintain your garden, you maintain uh, your children, uh, your husband, your significant other, so uh, your dog. It can't, so it's really about taking care. So you take care whether of people or of um, infrastructure. So here for us is making sure that the teams and is coherent, the team is working effectively, the customers, the customers are satisfied. We look at uh, client reviews, uh, we look at uh, the information that we gathered previously and see how best we can um, really build sustainability. So maintaining is very important because it's about continuity. So let's say we opened this restaurant, the launching was successful, the project went good. It's about really making sure that this restaurant is lasting and that it will shut down after, well, three months. 
it can take a long time to produce excellence, uh, but the slide back to mediocrity is quick without maintenance systems. So continuity is important. Now, the function I'm going to look at now is key, which is the linking. If you remember the circle we looked at at the beginning of the presentation, there was this gray circle in the middle, which is linking, which links all the activities together. So here we look at gluing all the activities, like I mentioned together. So the eight work functions that we described previously, it's about really how we bring them together. So what linking compromises uh, in the team management systems, it look at six people skills, five task skills, and two leadership skills. Linking the tasks of the team is just as important as linking the people. Without one, people suffer. Without the team, uh, outputs suffer. For the team leader, skills of motivation and strategy are required. So the concept of linking skills, it's a model by itself. We're going to explore it, uh, hopefully, in another webinar or another uh, presentation or follow-up session. But uh, what I would like to convey is that uh, focusing on both the task that needs to be done. So if you remember in the first slide, we looked at the key to success, which are one, how the tasks are done through the people, how they are behaving with regards to these tasks. And this is what the linking focuses. It gives you uh, best practices on really uh, how we can make sure that these tasks are done effectively, that the work functions are uh, effectively and uh, effectively if you want to to keep it simple integrated in the business and if people are really uh, performing up to the required standards if their level of energy because we talk about energy is really uh, uplifted and is bringing value to the business so it's that it's a win-win situation one people are happy and are enjoying what they're doing they're convinced they are being able to put uh, their ideas forward, they're being able to put their best skills forward, so they're being productive. So, this wheel is the model of people. First, we looked at the model of work. Here, we look at the model of people. And if we look closely in the circle, the model of people is divided into four main uh, categories. We have, as you see on the gray area, advisors, explorers, organizers, controllers. The advisors, or if you want uh, to take a colored look, are the greens. So they are the people whose energy or the type of work that they enjoy doing the most involved around reporting and innovating so gathering uh, information or coming up with new ideas explorers are in the yellow zone so explorers are the types of people who enjoy exploring new opportunities uh, promoting uh, doing presentation uh, influencing whether the team uh, to be on a specific task or uh, investors so they know how to get the buy-in and they focus also on really when this idea, when we get the buy-in, what's the best way of implementing these ideas or what's the best way of implementing the projects through assessing and developing. Then we move to organizers. Organizers are the thrivers. So they make things happen. They, um, what I mean what, by what they make things happen, it's that they handle the actual production. So, it's not that the advisor and explorers don't make things happen. It's just that the types of work is morely, if you want, intellectual, where in organizing, it becomes more hands-on by setting the process, by doing the actual work. And then we have the controllers or uh, the blue who really like focus and do the audit, whether financial audit, operational audit, and who focus on maintaining, on sustainability. What needs to be done to, uh, to stay, uh, for us to, for example, stay successful? Uh, what can we do to, make, to ensure continuity? How we can position ourselves or our, our business in the upcoming five years to make sure that, for example, we stay on top of our 
um, of our game. So this is the team management profile wheel. Why do we call it profile wheel? Because um, people or professional can take a questionnaire and can identify really where the energy of their teams lies within this model. So for example, when people take this, let's call it in a simple way, personality test, they are able to really understand their energies at work and the, uh, the areas where they're more comfortable working. So if we look here, we have the explorer promoters facing down there is the control inspectors. So these two are on the opposite side of the wheel. For example, an explorer promoter might enjoy or might perform uh, differently if placed in his work area, work preference area, then if, for example, placed in an area then uh, where he has to uh, do controlling and auditing. If the person is skilled at it, so here we looked at skills versus energy or versus preference. You can be skilled at something and excellent at it, but you may not enjoy doing it. So this is why when we look at work, we have performance gaps or performance inconsistency because you have the skill, but you do not have the motivation to do a specific task. So energy does not tell you if you're good at something or not good at something. It tells you which areas you're most likely to really shine in and um, perform better based on your work preference. So what happens here when we work out of preference? So I want to focus here on if people are placed in types of work where they're not very comfortable. Well, what happens? What happens to the business? What happens to the work? First, it's gonna require more conscious effort. So the timing required to produce something will be longer because the energy is somehow slower so this will affect if it if this task needs to be can be done for example in one minute it might take double with a person whose energy um, is not aligned with the task uses more personal energy so this means they they will have they will accomplish less in more time may take more time so here i focus on the notion of time Shortcuts are often taken. So what I mean by shortcuts often taken is that people will start to feel uncomfortable and they may take like shortcuts. Well, instead of following the process or following the system, let's, let me try to find a different way so I can get done with this quickly and which might need to have performance gaps or performance loopholes. So make uh, take more time. Shortcuts are taking. I'm refocusing on these two because these really impact the performance of the business. Poor quality. And here I highlighted something in parentheses. I mentioned the lows of the three Ps. What I mean by the lows of the three Ps is preference. When you work out of preference, you become more proficient and therefore you become more productive. So when you don't work, or you, when you work out of your preference, the result tends to be poor quality, or it can be, as I mentioned previously, inconsistent. You can have very good performance or very good quality delivered. However, sustaining or maintaining this standard will be more challenging. Difficult to sustain in the longer term, so this is why sometimes we have high turnovers in companies and definitely less motivating. Okay, who we are. So what I would like to focus on is um, at the Talent Lab, who we are and what do we do using the team management system that can really help companies energize their teams, therefore, accelerate uh, potential. And when we accelerate potential, have better success at work and become more and more performing or better performing. 
So at the Talent Lab, what we understand the most is that the best of seeds cannot grow and flourish without a supporting milieu. So it's like, if you want to take it from this perspective, you ask an eagle to swim. And then the eagle is, well, um, finding himself unproductive. The task is not completed. And well, it, we all know what is the potential or what are the, uh, the uh, pros of uh, eagles, what they can contribute. So if they are not in their proper environment, well, the results are, can be very catastrophic. The Talent Lab's raison d'être, so why we are here, is to enrich potentials in individuals, organizations, and communities by exploring, building, and highlighting their capacities. We strive to integrate interdisciplinary events and programs to stimulate, stimulate the link between knowledge and concrete practices of life. How do we do this? So our services, the Talent Lab is dedicated towards providing unique experiences to optimize potential and build capacities through its accredited and enriching bouquet of services. The first one, we look at strategic consultancy. So when, what we mean by strategic consultancy, let's take, for example, this team management system. We help uh, board of directors and executive apply this model to their businesses. Le two, learning and development. So we work on really um, not only the workshops and the learnings that you deliver to participants, but beyond that, like the ideas and change. Because uh, with learning and development comes innovation and change. So we have our learning and development services and we focus on how they, the new ideas and or how the changes that are recommended during learning and development initiatives can be integrated in within the organization's mission and strategy. And three, what we do is events consulting and design. So um, we, we handle corporate events, educational events, and community-based events. How to start? So if you'd like to start uh, with understanding really how to maximize energy at work, we have two recommendations for you. One, if you are an individual or a prof professional, you can start by getting your personal team management profile with a guidance session. So what happens is when you contact whether me or Michelle, we can send you the link to your questionnaire and you can receive your personal profile and it will give you a guidance session of how your what are your personal work energies and what are uh, current work situations that you're going through and how we can leverage on it you can choose to take the profile for yourself or you can choose to have your team profiled or uh, specific people within your work uh, receive this profile and, for, and understand where, where they stand from the team management wheel, which color or where their energy is more inclined to. Number two, you can book your corporate team leadership retreat. So the team leadership, in the team leadership retreat, what we do is we look at the two models, the model of work that we looked at at the beginning of this presentation, which is the eight type of work in addition to linking, how they are integrated in your business and how we can leverage each area, work on optimizing each area within your business. And then we look also at uh, the model of people. So we will have this leadership team profile and see really is the, does the team all within one energy field, like do we have lots of innovators or lots of producers? And if we do, what do we do about it to make sure that the energies are um, somehow balanced within uh, or aligned within the within the team so we can drive the company uh, in a successful direction and this are this is here like contact us we have the email uh, written here info at the dash talentlab.com or you can contact uh, michelle as well and I conclude by I like to conclude by this slide. We'll make it happen and start from somewhere. 
Very cool, Valerie. It's like good information. It's like, wow, we have a lot of questions. So I hope you're ready for some <clears throat> questions as long as we can go. Yes? Yes, I am. Awesome. You know, um, I think there are just a number of them, but one of the ones that came in is interesting information. Um, what would you recommend as first steps in having my employees work together better? Okay, um, well, as a first step to have the employees uh, work together better, uh, I would recommend uh, a workshop, a team management uh, workshop, so uh, where you can group the employees that are not working together better. And uh, what we do here is uh, we can sit with, um, with you or the management, the people concerned, try to understand what are the challenges and see how we can customize the workshop uh, to make sure that um, we find solutions to these challenges. It's, and the length or the duration I mentioned workshop depends on what are the challenges that the team is already facing. Or we might, after sitting together, say they might, we might not need to start with a workshop, we might need to start with something else. But uh, a recommendation would be at least to have a team building or a, a, team, a team workshop, a get together workshop where we explore the challenges and let the team themselves like, give recommendations and try to find solutions. Yeah, and I think that leads to my question, Valerie. We got a, quite a few questions, so we might run out of time, but I know we've got your info for people to reach out to you. Um, you know, how do you, do you scale how you do what you do to work with both big companies and small businesses? Because I'm just looking at our attendees and, you know, we have about 70% small businesses and, you know, some corporate leaders and uh, managers on, on our webinar. So how do you, you know, are you... Are you accessible for small business or do you only deal with corporate America, I think is my question. No, uh, the, the model is scalable, so I'm available for small businesses because uh, we really look at what are the work functions and what this business is doing within this work function and how they're doing it. So the model and, uh, is scalable and uh, the profiling helps every individual, whether he's a, or she is a solopreneur, uh, an entrepreneur, a small business, a large corporation. It's just that the methodology and the content differs. Cool, cool. And then, you know, for you, can you, one of the other questions is, can you kind of share a couple of client, you know, success stories? I mean, maybe not saying what the company or who the company is, if, you, if it's confidential, but, you know, kind of walk us through a couple of client success stories. Uh, yes, for sure, I can. Um, uh, for example, okay, um, some, uh, let's say, for example, there's a company that was consistently focusing on uh, standard production and start, uh, standard uh, uh, and consistent uh, results. So they were focusing on uh, very good and premium product quality. So their major focus was in the producing area. So uh, focusing on standards and operation and through time, well, how did this model help? It helped them shed light on the innovating function. And really, they felt that their competitors were ahead of them. So what can we do here to become more innovative? So when, and when they did, for example, the profiling, they realized, well, if the decision makers are more mainly inclined and their energy is mainly inclined toward the producing, then innovating, which is on the other side of the, um, of the wheel from the producing is less given importance. So here we look, well, what can we do uh, about it? And how can we make sure if we don't enjoy it well, uh, what happens? Do we fire the whole team or do we have fire part of the team? Of course not. And here we comes, comes uh, recommendations on how we can help, for example, businesses. Uh, if their energy or their direction or their strategy is focused on a specific area, how they can redirect it to ensure their success. So this is like an example, and this company is a photography business. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is one example. Another example can be uh, high turnover of employees, high employee turnover. And when we look at high employee turnover, this affects the consistency in uh, the quality uh, that's delivered to customers. So we, uh, and then the client, so well, the maintaining function is, uh, is lacking. We're not able to maintain our employees, we're not maintaining, and this is affecting the internal procedures and is giving drawbacks on our uh, fallbacks on our customers. What do we do about it? So here we also help the company through by having their people profiled, by having a look at the internal structure and, uh, the, and business model, uh, help them really well 
what can we do to to focus on employee retention so uh, this model really uh, is very helpful because it helps companies look inwardly and outwardly look at their competition their clients look at their themselves as a, a mission uh, and team and uh, strategic executive member and look at the team so um, these are like two examples that yeah that great no, that's great. So here's another question, um, and I'm just going to read it verbatim. You know, again, I don't have a lot of context on it, but um, this is from oh, this is from uh, Beverly, and she says it sounds like this is a program versus a one-time workshop. Yes, uh, definitely. Uh, the one-time workshops helps in creating awareness. However, the programs helps creating the sustainability. So when you do the workshop or the retreat for your team, it gives them awareness on the model. It helps people understand, well, what are we going to work on and why? Uh, and why is this model important? So the, it starts with a workshop and it later on uh, becomes a deeper and deeper program. Okay. Okay. And then this is from Cheryl. Is the personal and team pro, I'm sorry, is the personal and team profile free or, or is there a fee? Uh, no, uh, there's a uh, there's a fee that comes with it. Um, so first, when you do the profile and you do the gu the guidance session comes complimentary uh, because it's like the first session that that you're doing. But then, as we work together through different sessions, uh, the session becomes uh, becomes uh, a paid, of course. But uh, the firstly, she will have to. Uh, is paid it's a paid service the guidance session is complimentary but the session the follow-up sessions and the maintenance session uh, are also uh, paid so I can share pricing details via email if she wishes to contact um, yeah can you um, maybe what you could do is explain more about what people get for the um, kind of free piece if they give you if they fill out the profile information like what what do they get with that in the guidance session yes in the guidance session they what they will get is to understand where they lie within what are what's their energy where they lie within the uh, the team management wheel and uh, it's open to question and challenges that the person is currently facing to help determine uh, next step so it's like a complementary strategy session first she gets uh, awareness about her profile so it creates self-awareness that's one this is the benefit uh, number two it's uh, when she or or, the, or he uh, takes the profile um, and share their challenges we, it helps set a strategy for how this profile uh, their profile can help her with their with her uh, within her work uh, within her work behavior and within her work success so, so it's really more of an individual type thing as opposed to a team. Uh, well, if she wants to take it on uh, on uh, by herself, if she wants to make like the team profiled, then um, then we th then the guidance session wouldn't be a one on one. It would be like a group one. Okay. Okay. That's the difference. Yeah. It's a yeah. forty minutes guidance session. Okay. And so hope we'll have that at, on the on the YouTube and all that, so people can touch base with you because they've got their in your info. Uh, yes. This is an interesting question. So this is from Lucy, and she says, how is maintaining different than KPIs? Um, she put down maintaining versus measurement, question mark. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, um, when, you, when you have a KPI or when you measure something, okay, you, for example, you check the result. Let's say now uh, the key performance indicator, for example, uh, for let's take the restaurant example, is to have the salad with the with this type of flavor. So when you do the KPI, you put the standard and you produce the salad with the, this type of flavors, this sauce, etc. When you maintain it, you make sure that it always have, or it's consistent, it always has the same type of flavor, the same type. Of, so it's always up to standard. So KPI is setting the standard, maintaining is making sure that the standard is continuously met. Wow, okay. Do you have another example of a, a business that, you know, maybe you've done that with of how to, do you establish KPIs with the company, Valerie, or, or is that through the team working better together that those kind of come out? Well, this, uh, the KPIs are usually when we, when we do this with businesses, uh, there's a, of course, there's a team that within the talent lab that works um, within the inward team because we help businesses uh outshine their competition and by doing this we really uh, the kpis are very important so usually um 
they are uh, worked joined by the internal team and our experts also uh, give their insights or give their consultancy but it's not just from uh, nobody from us would come and say but well, this is how your kpis should be no it's we look at the model i mean it's a it's a different uh, it's a different uh, a type of focus so we help business set their kpis but it's a joint work like uh, the internal department or the department who's in charge um, de depending on how we're working on this works with our team so it's a uh, it's it goes it's an exchange it goes both ways okay okay um here's another one this is <laughs> this is from kathy i'm not getting how to determine performance gaps explain uh, how to determine performance gap? Well, one of the examples is, for example, inconsistency in the performance. So this could be a performance gap. Let's say, for example, you have an employee who delivers, uh, for example, um, who delivers like uh, very good, uh, for example, very good trainings one day during the uh, the, the trainings, like uh, let's say a technical trainings. Uh, okay, the person is following the manual, delivering as based on the KPIs, how you want the person to deliver the training. So the, deli uh, the training is uh, delivered based on the based to the standards required two, three times, but then you have other three times. Well, the person is just not following uh, the guidelines or uh, not, not abiding by the content. Then what, what's happening here? Why are we doing this? So, uh, so here, for example, there's a gap in the performance unless the person, for example, comes and says, well, I have some new suggestions to, that can be done to this training or that can be done to this uh, manual, um, what, what's happening? Or the, the, so here it's one, how you determine performance gap, you look at consistency, how consistent is the person in the, with the, in the performance. Two, you look at efficiency. Uh, so here are some examples. So how efficient and effective uh, is the result so uh, so these are like some examples on how do you determine performance gaps uh, motivation you look at the energy well uh, you can look at absences you can look at uh, problem solving is does the person defer problem solving or is the person engaged in finding a solution so these are like some of indicators we're not because there are there can be many uh, sometimes through sales numbers um, Sometimes the person is, sell, is selling, uh, is meeting sales target consist, uh, for three consecutive months, and then sometimes you have other six months where the target is not met. So it's, I'm giving like year specific examples. Yeah. But, when, uh, Val Valerie, when's the best time to bring you in? Like what's going on with a department or a team? I mean, I, I know you said that there's gaps or, you know, that there's dysfunction maybe with the team, but what recognizable triggers can any of our, managers or leaders look for that tell you it's a good time to bring you in okay uh they can look for uh, some of the indicators can be well um inconsistent uh, inconsistent performance uh, not adapting to change or to uh innovation not adapting to innovation or change uh employee uh, there is no proper employee retention so there's a high turnover um, sometimes there's a marketing or promoting uh, where the promoting function is not very well uh, highlighted so some of the indicators or mainly the general indicators uh, lie within well the team is not working well together we have communication problems within the departments we have communication problems even within the team itself Two, a resistance to change three uh, well through resistance you have resistance and adaptability three it's uh, resistance to innovation and to new ideas so we're constantly doing the same thing so the company is feeling stuck somewhere or the company feels it needs a new direction uh, for uh, retention poor uh, poor employee or poor customer retention like the customers uh, uh, well they either leave uh, they do not either come back or uh, they leave poor reviews so these are some of the cases where the companies can call me in. Yeah, yeah, which leads to, I mean, and this is another question. This is from Sue, and she says, how do I get my team to innovate more consistently? Uh, well, these are uh, some ideas that we work in, um, in having, and we work together. So sometimes you can, I'm going to just share now openly just uh, uh, two. Um, you can, sometimes if the, f the team is not feeling very creative or very innovative, there's something that we call reverse brainstorming, and I'm gonna 
what we do by reverse brainstorming is they come up and they share all their problems or everything that's bothering them and then you write one idea after the other and then what you do is then you take every idea one by one and you try to find some solutions for every well i'm not going to say idea for every problem let's say well i don't like that the training always starts too early we don't have high participants coming because the training starts too early well early training what can we do about it what, do, what are some suggestions? Mm -hmm. Two, for example, I don't like that the training is three consecutive days from nine to five. People get bored easily. Well, length of training, uh, content within the training. So what really hear people, if she wants to feel, it makes her team feel more innovative. One, I, one tip for her is, well, let them vent or let them talk about everything they're not comfortable about. Well, I don't like this. I don't like, I don't like, I don't like, I don't like. Uh, this is a problem, a problem. And then facing every problem, well, break them, uh, break them down and start like, well, what can we do about this? What can we do about this? And start evaluating the, the feasibility of the suggestions. Yeah. As well. That's cool. And here's our final question, my dear, and then we need to wrap up. And so this is an interesting one. It's like, this is from Tracy. And it's like, what can you describe what happens at a leadership or management or team retreat? I'm, mm -hmm. And she put, you're going to laugh on this one, she put, I'm thinking spa. I don't know if that's the case. <laughs> I, I'm thinking what? I'm thinking what? I'm thinking, I'm thinking spa, S-P-A. Um, like oh, a, spa. Like a spa. Okay, retreat. relaxation. Like, no, 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 no. That's not a leadership <laughs> retreat. So mm -hmm. what, what happens at a leadership retreat, is, I think, is what she's getting at. Okay, well, what happens on the leadership retreat? One, uh, one we work on the, lo on the location, so we make sure that the location is uh, inventive, out of the box, so that they feel that the people are ready in a different, uh, uh, different mood. And uh, two, what happens as well, we let the people, the participants, fill their team management profile before the retreat, and then the exercises um, are designed based on uh, how, how people's energies are, and of course, there are prior meetings before the retreat where we get to understand with the management or the team, well, what do they hope that they achieve or what are some of the challenges that they are facing and what we cover the retreat on. And then you have these two days. If they want to have a third day, it's, um, it's up to the management, but it's mixed between learning and, and uh, light fun. And we uh, adapt the, uh, start by adapting or explaining the eight functions and linking them to their business. We don't go very in depth because after that it becomes like more business consultative. In the retreat, we look at the work functions. We look at how the teams work within the work functions actually. What's their behavior? And well, they get first to ice break and know their, uh, where they stand. They get to find uh, and to come up with, well, new directions and new solutions and new considerations. So, very cool. Yeah, yeah. we're going to ask people to contact you again, and then I think we'll bring you back for a second round if you want us. So, <laughs> yes, you, I'd be happy to run with us, which would be great. So, I want to thank you, Valerie, for being our our thought leader today and our leading lady. And to our attendees, it's like, gosh, thank you for joining us. As we will be back again for another Women Lead webinar series. And in the meantime, you know, thanks for joining us, and we'll be reaching out again. So, thank you.